welcome back to another review by Mega Train Lover. Today we are having a look at a limited edition horned model, and as you can see, it's a train pack. And you can clearly tell from the text, but it's a BRH class pull push. Um, that's the name of a train pack. But basically, what you get in the train pack, you get a gorgeous little um, Wainwright H class. And then you get two Southern Railway coaches. One of them is fitted with a cab, um, allowing push pull operation. So you might ask, you may ask, what is push pull? Basically, uh, you get the engine here. So this is the train. Uh, the train is in the box. Um, but basically, what you get was the locomotive would come to the end of the line, and <coughs> excuse me. Rather than the um, driver, well, 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 how do I put it? Rather than having to run the engine around, so basically, normally you would have to uncouple the engine at the terminus, run the engine around to the other side, and then recouple. Rather than doing that, the driver would just simply step out of the engine, and walk to the other other end. So this coach here, which had a cab, and then he would basically just drive the end, the drive the train backwards. And using a series of, um, I think they, I think at first they used uh, linkages, but the linkages weren't very reliable. Um, so I think uh, on the Southern Railway at least um, they used compressed air to control the um, the controls in the cab. So you, you would be able to operate the regulator, um, and the brake as well. Uh, and all the while the fireman would remain in the engine to look after the boiler. Um, well, the engine rather, but obviously, you know, there has to be someone looking after the, the boiler as well and stoking the fire and stuff. A um, bit of history, the H-Class, um, they're a fairly old design, I think they were built in the uh, late 1890s, early 1900s. Um, I think at first they were built for suburban uh, traffic, but later replaced uh, and then rele relegated to branch line duties. And they were designed by Wainwright, and they were built um, for and they were built for the Southeastern and Chatham Railway. Um, and basically, they were they survived right up until the 1960s. This set um, shows what it shows what one of these engines looked like in 1963, as you can see. Um, it from the text and only one of these H-Class engines has survived and that is on the Bluebell Railway and it has been restored into the original uh, South Eastern and Chatham Railway livery. Um, but anyway, if we turn to the back you just get the um, picture of the train and you can see it's a limited edition of 1000 and you do get a certificate but I've put the certificate away uh, along with the instructions for the logo so all you get inside um, all, well, all I have inside here is just the locomotive and the coaches. So what we'll do is we'll just open it and then just slide it out. Let's put the box to one side. And uh, here you can see you get the loco and the two coaches. So what we're going to do is um, this is the older style. This is the very old style Formby packaging. But what we're going to do is there are there is a one hole at the back, so we're just going to start pushing the engine and just sort of lift it out like that. Be very careful because the engine is very well detailed. Let's get the engine out. Then we're going to get the coaches out. So let's push the coach. Although again with the coaches, be very careful because they are very well detailed, just like the engine that to one side as well and now finally let's get the second coach which is the driving trailer coach um, basically it has the the cab um, again being very very careful very very gentle ah don't 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 don't, don't. no 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 okay try again uh, it's just a rear bogey yes it's fine uh, no detail no detail damage no it's fine okay let's put these to one side I hate this, I absolutely hate this packaging, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's fine, it, it, it's a good thing they've pretty much, apart from these train packs, they've pretty much done away with this, with um, individual locos, but um, 
I think on train packs now they don't don't have this really, but um, oh well. Anyway, uh, what we'll do is we'll just put the coaches to one side uh, for the moment. So we'll have a look at those in a short while. And now let's take a look at the engine, which is beautiful. Wow. Just look at her. Oh my gosh. Considering how small she is, the level of detail is just absolutely, uh, it, it's mind blowing. It's by far the one of it's one of the most detailed tank engines I've ever seen. It's, I it's it's better than, I think it's more detailed than the M7, which in itself is a beautiful, beautifully detailed model. But anyway, let's take a look at the basic details. So you get sprung buffers uh, on all four uh, corners of the engine. Just uh, as you can see, it is a 044. So you get no um, no trailing wheels at the front. You get the four driving wheels, and then the four bogey wheels at the back. And from what I can see, the four bogey wheels, the, the they have a much shorter wheelbase. On the M7, they're slightly more. Uh, it's a slightly longer wheelbase, but here it's notably shorter. You get the late crest. And there's its number three one five five one, and its power, classific power classification is one P. So it's well, it's <laughs> it's not very powerful, is it? But um, it does have enough power to move just these two coaches. But honestly, there is just so much detail on this. Even even on the ins there's dummy inside motion, uh, just there, which is fantastic. Uh, one thing which I don't recall seeing on any of my models is the brake, um, what do you call this, the brake pump. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, just look at that, and the way it's positioned on the engine is brilliant. Even the modern high voltage stickers, I mean this is, this does portray a set from 1963, um, and obviously the southern region part of it did work on the, or a lot of the southern region works on the third rail, but um, these, you know, did enter the these did venture onto parts uh, which had third rail. So, for example, say if you had a um, engine going from Tunbridge Wells to Uckfield um, along the old, I think it was the Cuckoo Line. Say if you had an engine, um, basically Uckfield to Tunbridge Wells isn't electrified, but then the Tunbridge Wells area is. So obviously, you know, these did operate over third rail slightly. But wow, the engine just looks so cute as well. It's so Victor very Victorian. Even you even get little text there. Um, like for example, I think all, I think it's to do with the controls on the um, for the push pull system. You even get um, from what I can see the. Uh, no, I was about to say the upper body is metal, but it isn't. Uh, you get the safety valve there and a whistle. And one very special thing is that the cab roof vent does actually open, like that. You can see. Uh, let's, just keep, let's just keep it open for the crew. Um, uh, speaking of the cab, it is brilliantly well detailed. So you can clearly see this, um, what, looks, what appears to be a handbrake. But you can also clearly see the regulator. And what other details? You can see all the gauges and the dials, um, levers. Yeah. You can get, I think, I think that looks like a reverse. Yeah, you do get the reverser on the right. That's what it is. Yep, it's the reverser. Um, at the back, you get you get them couplings on both front and back. Uh, the brake pipes were already added. Um, in fact, I have not had to add any detail onto this logo apart from the brake rods. The brake rods were the only uh, detail which I had to add, but otherwise, the engine is just beautifully well detailed. Absolutely stunning. I mean, <laughs> it's such a small oak. I mean, it's it's only it it, it fits onto my hand easily. I mean, it's so small, but the level of detail is 
beautiful absolutely beautiful uh, let's put the engine to one side and we'll have a look at the coaches so you get the two coaches here this is the driving trailer coach with the cab but we'll have a look at the uh, coach just behind the engine um, which is absolutely beautiful interior the inside is brilliant it's absolutely brilliant low you get a lot of delicate detail underneath um, you get all this all this uh, wiring just on the end of the coach even at the other end you do get a proprietary connector uh, but I think I think this is just the standard Hornby close coupling um, close coupling mechanism because uh, you do get that on the other coach as well just there but wow really really nice even down to the little no I think that says no smoking yep no smoking wow sprung buffers as you would expect although that although that right buffer doesn't seem to be too sprung but um, never mind uh, NEM couplings as well uh, there's even NEM couplings on this end but um, I'm just gonna keep that just to just to know you know which end to couple the um, other coach too. So you see this has a gangway connection but this one doesn't because this is right behind the engine. Um, but yeah, but I'll just show you how the coupling works. So you just push the two together like you do with a normal coupling and you just sort of lock on like so. To uncouple you push the you push these two rings up like so being very careful and then just pull them apart. Uh, speaking of the other coach, let's take a look at it. And this is just as well detailed. This is the let's stop that from running out of order. Uh, this is the other coach. This does have compartments unlike that coach and it does have first class as well. You get the guard compartment there and this is the coach with the driving cab. So if we just look inside um, you can't really see it, but there is quite a bit of detail. And you can see the windows at the ends there. Uh, sprung buffers as well, um, also on the other end. Um, but wow, absolutely brilliant! I think I think it looks like a whistle. Yeah, it does. It does look like a seems like a whistle there. Here we go. I'm trying to look into the cab, but it's not. It's not an awful much to see. You do get. You do even get a window wiper, which is separately fitted. Um, you would get coupling at this end, but I've removed it because there's no. There's no real need for it to be honest. Because um, this is the driving end, so you know. But um, wow. I mean, the end of the coach. Uh, there's no, there's no lamp or anything, but um, I do, I do suppose you know it did fit a lamp uh, when it was going backwards. But wow, I mean, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and then the undercarriage detail is pretty delicate as well, but it's very, very nice. All in all, I am extremely impressed with this train pack um, in terms of looks, but that may be one thing what about the uh, what about performance let's find out so so here we have the Hornby pull push train pack on the track uh, of H class pull push train pack that is and wow she just looks amazing um, anyway let's select her number which in my instance is 55 and off she goes. Wow. I've put, I've put the controller halfway, but she's, she's running pretty fast, actually. She's, uh, wow. Actually, she's running a bit too fast. Let's slow it down a bit. Yeah, dear, that's much better. Um, wow. The coaches are 
rolling along very smoothly and the engine the engine's just beautiful let's get a few shots of the train passing There, all in all, this is a beautiful little train pack. Well worth the money. Being a push pull train, I've decided to run it in reverse as well. But just to conclude, I definitely recommend it. The detail on the end, even even if you don't get this train pack, but just the locomotive is well worth it. This loco is just so well detailed. It's for a tank engine. It's unbelievable. But anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next review. Goodbye.